Hi guys, back again with another video, and I'm going to be doing this time showing you guys um, how I do gradient uh, color schemes um, on my Gundam parts. So I have a few different uh, sets of colors that I want to test out. It's going to be kind of like a second video to the Energy Blade that I did, it's the same concept as you're, you're doing a gradient where um, you want the colors to flow seamlessly through um, each different color that you have, and I find that this works best in threes or more. Um, it just depends on like what you're doing, um, but you'll get more of a, uh, how should I put it, like a vibrant, um, a more vibrant look the more colors you involve in um, priming, but uh, not priming, but involving in the color scheme. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily go over three because when you're talking about Gundam parts, they're really, really tiny versus uh, I'm going to be doing these on spoons. And I prim primed all of them gray. So let's start out with the close color scheme that I did on the recent... Uh, double o xn riser it's not the same exact colors because i did a pre-mixed um i came up with my own like a kind of blue sky blue but these i just wanted to, for convenience purposes i wanted to just squeeze them out of the bottle and um all of vallejo's paints you can just use straight out of the bottle you don't need to thin it at all um so for this one i'm going to be using Alien Purple, Imperial Blue, and um, Ultreme Blue. Now, the way I go about doing this is I try and find the darkest color. I Or the way I like to pair colors is I have a dark color, which would be this one, the Imperial Blue. And then I'm going to have this one as a middle ground color um, to kind of bring everything together. And then I get a lighter color, whether it be a lighter blue or this... I'm in this case I'm going to use purple um, to bring it all together. So let's turn on the compressor. I'll work at uh, let's see fifteen psi should be fine for this. Okay, so to start everything out, I'm going to lay down my middle color, which is going to be my main color to this part or said spoon and you won't need a lot of paint now this is going to be over the whole entire part And the reason why you want to do it this way, and that I found out is the best, is it really helps bring all the colors together. Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like where I think most people like, oh, how do you get such good gradients? I'm going to, after this piece, I'm going to try and maybe think of how people would normally um, spray it themselves. And I'm not saying this is a bad way or... Um, or anything but it would again it just makes things a little bit harder to bring the colors together not saying that it's impossible you can do it it's just gonna take a lot more layering than the way I'm doing it or the way I I just kind of was like oh this makes a lot more sense than to do them one by one so it doesn't matter um, I normally typically like to start with a the dark color next but it doesn't honestly matter if you go with the lighter or darker color. So let's go ahead. Do the darker color. We're going to do it on the bottom half. 
we really want that dark color to be noticeable on this bottom portion and then we're going to slowly bring that up into the rest of the part and we want it to really fade nicely it's kind of hard to see but this is definitely the darkest area and that's what we want and then it slowly fades up into that lighter blue all right, and now we're going to go on to oops, the light purple. The only bad thing about doing this technique or this uh, painting style, uh, it takes forever because you're constantly cleaning out your airbrush because you don't want any of the colors mixing together where they're not supposed to be mixing together because that's not really the point of this painting technique but it is a process <laughs> it is a really long process but honestly I don't mind it whatsoever because it looks absolutely amazing in the end it's one of my favorite painting techniques along with um uh, going ahead and masking off parts and painting them separate uh, colors. This should be good. You really want to get that top, that nice purpley color, and then you'll fade it into the middle of that blue there we go that seems like a pretty good angle but yeah you see how it's really purple here and then we just we lightly lightly bring it into that blue and then if it's not to your liking if this is a little bit too much or if this dark is a little bit too much we can just go over the middle color again and to really bring it all together but I think that looks pretty good yeah. All right, so this is what I think most people do. Um, I'll just start out with this purple because it's in here. I think what most people do is they're like, okay, well, I want this top section, this purple color, and they'll, they'll fade it in a little bit like that. And then, let's get it. darker color or uh, the middle color that I used. I'm gonna come in the middle and try and fade it in this way. And we'll have that middle really blue and then fade it up to the top like that. <clears throat> that so now this is why I believe it does not work as well as you doing this method you can definitely see the difference of this being a lot more um, gentle going in between the different colors and transition versus this it's a very um, hard lined where you can definitely tell that that the uh, that's where the purple is that's where the purple then gets cut off by the middle blue and then this is where it gets cut off by so gray background for uh, i know this looks white but it's gray um you go off of a gray background for all the different colors now what you were doing with this method is we're actually making the background now if you wanted to save time instead of doing like a gray you could technically prime the parts all in blue but I like trying to keep it close. Like if I wanted a specific like middle color, uh, like this one, I do prime the prime the parts in gray and then go over with uh, whatever middle color I'm trying to uh, achieve. Now it's the same thing when you the reason why we prime carts uh, prime parts in either gray, white, or black. You can definitely see um, a difference between 
what a what the same exact color looks like sprayed on white back or white primer, gray primer, or in black primer. And it's the same concept here to get that nice clean gradient. Now, it obviously doesn't have to be done in the energy blade colors, which would be like a dark red, a bright red, and then uh um either a orange or yellow, uh, depending. It can be done with all sorts of different colors. Like I I really like the color scheme of the dark green and this like kind of like a lime green and yellow. Now it's kind of hard to tell which one you would actually use as a middle color for this. Um, mainly because you have two greens and you have a yellow. You're like, well, the yellow can technically be a middle color because it's dark enough to be. And this can definitely be classified as a dark color. Um, and this would be a lighter color. But do you necessarily want to f have the transitioning be made with the yellow? Or do you want it being made with the green? And that's what it really comes down to. Now, for this instance, I think I'm probably going to go ahead and go with the yellow to transition into all of this. Um, I know it sounds kind of weird, but I'll we'll go with the yellow and we'll see what it looks like. So let's go ahead and spray our next part all in this gold gold yellow it's a really pretty yellow it kind of reminds me of like a like a sunset and a nice warm sunny day oh did i oh i didn't even clean out the pot oh man <laughs> remember to clean out your spray pot otherwise things won't look good <laughs> oops my bad and you'll waste a little paint while you're at it too now we have pure yellow, which is what we want. Alright. Now I'm going to switch over to the dark green. And this is Sick Green from the Game Air line. These are all Game Air colors, by the way. Which you won't find in the Mecca line. But you'll probably find something similar or close to it if you wanted to use the Mecca colors. gradient and then we're going to go with this really light it almost looks like a neon green it's called there we go lightning livery green all right Almost hard. It's almost unnoticeable for the most part, uh, but it is there. It is slightly greener at the top. It's also really hard to tell sometimes because the the pets the paint is still really wet. But this is slightly different than this, so that's all right. If you have um, slightly different colors or really close colors together, um, that's actually not a bad thing because it'll just look that much. Better. I mean, it might look like you didn't even change the color, but when you get really close to the to the pieces, you'll be like, oh yeah, that looks really cool. I didn't even notice that there was actually a different layered color in there. So then the last one, it's not necessarily doing a gradient of these um, of these different. Uh, how should I put it? The 
metallics. But what I have seen online that I thought is really cool um, is people paint entire parts in either like a like a, glo a gold or a or a it's mainly gold or a brass is what I've seen. And what they do is they paint the entire part in it. And what they do is um, they'll go in and on the edges of the part where you would normally make a shadow, they'll just line it with black. And bring and it looks so neat. So I wanted to show you that you just uh, start with your metallics first. And then you go on over the top of that with um, with your black. And the reason why you would do that is because um, metallics have a really bad habit of, um, like, a really bad... Now, I normally wouldn't be painting this on gray. I'd be painting this on white. I don't know why I decided to... Or, I'm sorry, black, but I don't know why <laughs> Why I didn't do that. It's because I'm... I don't know. I'm crazy. But, um... The reason why you wouldn't do the opposite, where you would paint everything in black and then go over it with... Well, you would paint it black initially to get that metallic nice and shiny. Um, but then you would have to go over it again with black. Um, just to go ahead and take out those... To get that really cool effect. I'll have to find a reference picture of what I'm talking about, but it's really neat. I've seen it online, and I'm pretty sure this is how they do it. So then we'll go ahead and grab our black. And what they do is they, like, they, like, highlight the edges... Something like this kind of effect where they have just the slightest bleed in, but those edges are really prominent and that looks so neat. You can even like dull it slightly if you wanted to to give it that more definition while still having that really nice shiny spot. But yeah, I always thought that technique was really neat. Um, I want to do it on a kit eventually. I just need to figure out which kit I want to completely, <laughs> or at least on p parts of the kit. Um, like, let's say if I do the the wing zero, which would be really cool, um, to do it on the wings and then maybe select parts of the um, body. I it might be a little bit overkill if you did it on the entire kit. I'm not, but I mean, I have seen people that have done it and pulled off it really, really nice. Um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of go over um, the reasons why you would, why it's really important if you want to have a nice gradient. I'll go back to these two spoons. If you want to have a really nice clean gradient, this method seems to be provide a cleaner gradient than this method. Yeah, because you can definitely see the... The differences. But anyways, um, that was just a really quick video explaining why it's important if you really want to achieve a nice clean gradient to have a, uh, a color that will essentially unify your darker colors and lighter colors. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the description. And like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!